technical support and uh, main speaker today. And Jordan Petrov, who will help us with uh, technical questions, if you have. Uh, I believe you will, and I would like to invite you uh, to ask your questions either in the chat or using your microphone uh, when enable it. A few words about uh, Teletech Electronics. Uh, we're the largest Bulgarian manufacturer of complete uh, range of intruder alarm, communication solutions, and fire alarm equipment. Uh, our company was founded in 1991, and already 30 years almost, we continue to research, develop, and uh, realize high performance products and solutions. Uh, I think with about 10 people, 10 employees uh, at the beginning with small rented office. Today, the company has around 180 employees, a couple of uh, administrative buildings, own modern factory, and uh, more than 30 million manufactured products. Uh, all products manufactured by Teletech Electronics are certified in large international and reputable uh, laboratories like uh, LPCB, UK, EVPU, um, for their compliance with uh, the standards of European community. Uh, our products and systems are installed in more than 75 countries worldwide. Uh, some of the most iconic projects with equipment from Teletech Electronics are townhouse, hospitals, uh, airports, state and uh, municipalities, um, as well as high-risk sites, uh, which are requiring um, uh, technological and um, adaptive turnkey solutions, compliant with the new technological channels for connectivity and uh, remote access. Uh, now, I will give the floor to my colleague Kirill, who will explain to you the specifics and uh, advantages of our products. Kirill, if you are ready. Yeah, hello, hello everybody. If, uh, just a few words. If you can shut down your cameras, because I'm not going to be using your cameras, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Let me just turn my camera around so you can put a face to the voice. That's me. I'm technical support engineer in Teletech for over 12 years now. Um, what you have as an option in this web uh, presentation, um, I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, okay. Here you have. Can I make it bigger? Full screen. Um, if you click on a chat window, uh, a chat's gonna pop up on the right hand side, and you will be able to um, um, address your questions during my presentation to my colleague. You're done. He will be able to answer you in written form in that chat. However, feel free to stop me, interrupt me, and ask me. Uh, should any question arises in your head and you want to answer and you want to um, deliver them to me directly. Um, now I have the pleasure to present to you our intruder systems. I don't know your knowledge. I don't know your experience with that. And I have an about um, half an hour, 40 minutes to do that. Um, and this time I'll try to uh, give you the key points and present the products as uh, as good as possible, of course. As Ziva said, we are on the market 30 years now. That's not accidentally. There's it got to be something to the company that stays on the market for 30 years and, and not only survives, it, gave, it gains and becomes bigger and bigger. And the beginning of the uh, presentation that we have put together for you. 
Let me just see how can I minimize that chat window that pops up on the top. I'm going to shut my camera down as well, not to uh, um, overload the communication. Yep, my computer got jumped a bit. Uh, let me just stop the sharing, see if I can get out of this view and put my camera back. There you go. I guess you see my uh, screen now. Good. Intruder detection. We have a systems and series called Eclipse. Uh, Eclipse series. It's containing of four systems: Eclipse Eight, Eclipse Sixteen over here, Eclipse 32 and Eclipse 99. The respective name is 81632. We cannot see your share, actually. I, I cannot no. see your share. Yep. Okay, I'll do it again. Let me know in a second if it's okay now. Is it good now? No, it's okay. No. Okay. You just need to put it on the, on the full screen. All right. Yeah, perfect. All right, uh, we have the Eclipse series, as I mentioned just a second ago, 8, 16, 32, and 99. The numbers correspond to the respective zone capability of the systems, 8 zones, 16, 32, and 99 zones. Um, they look pretty much alike, um, except that you can have them in different boxes. The small system, you can have a small plastic box. The big system, you can have in a big plastic box. Of course, these plastic boxes are designed to accommodate different kind of communication models and batteries, of course. The, on this slide, I can see um, up to 16 partitions. Uh, of course, this is applicable for the biggest Eclipse on 99. Uh, if, uh, if you want to break it down, I can give you that. Uh, Eclipse 8 has one partition, Eclipse 16 has three partitions, Eclipse 32 has uh, eight partitions, and Eclipse 99 has 16 partitions. Some people call it partitions, some people call it areas. It's up to you. Uh, it means the same thing. Respectively, the zones up to 99 corresponding to the biggest panel, um, up to 30 periphery device. Everything that's Everything that you connect to the system, uh, like keyboards, zone expander, uh, uh, output expanders, some people call them PGM expanders, they're uh, proxy card readers that consider periphery devices. So we can connect an Eclipse 32 and Eclipse 99 up to 30 of those periphery devices, regardless of their type. Their type could be 30 uh, keyboards, their type could be 30 zone expanders. Someone might ask, why would I connect 30 zone expanders? Well, there is an answer for everything. If you want to get 30 zones that are 200, 500 meters away from the panel, each one of them, then you might want to use 30 zone expanders and use one zone on each expander. This is just hypothetically speaking, most of the installation are not executed this way, so you don't get 30 zone expanders. But anyway, that, this just gives you the opportunity to design and flexibility to design your system according to the properties that you want to are supervised. Um, now, the distance between the periphery devices and the control panel, according to the protocol that we're using, is up to one kilometer, which is substantial. Um, in reality, having uh, gone that far uh, is not um, is not a common case. Usually, you know, and and and. Up until now, the, the normal systems on the market, they allow you 100 meters from the keyboard or 150 meters. We go much further. We go, as I said, according to the protocol, one kilometer, but realistically, probably not going to need to go further than 250, 300, 500 meters. This is half a kilometer. It makes the, a little bit uh, the installation weird. <clears throat> what we have also, uh, we have three uh, arming types. 
who stay and sleep. What's interesting about who stay and sleep is that you don't have to present your user code to change between those modes. Once you uh, activate stay mode, you can go to sleep mode, you can go back to stay mode without presenting your code, and you can go to full arm without, without presenting your code. Of course, for disarming, you have to present your code. Um, we have three programming styles. What that means um, that you, what, what's interesting here is, is to mention just about the text. The other programming styles are the same as the other, the, the other manufacturers and, and um, um, systems on the market. Codes, you know, technicians are usually remember several codes that they work the most with. And then if they have to do something different out of the ordinary, they have to get the book and let's say assign uh, output uh, number five for some event, they have to look in the book and see what code, what four digit correspond to this output of this event. Here we have the text menu. Text menu, it's um, it's very uh, very easy to use. It's, it's just like your phones. When you go into the system, the system displays with understandable text, uh, zones, partitions, outputs, devices. So it makes the life of the installer much easier. And of course, the education of the installer much easier from your side, let's say. Um, second entry time. Uh, this is an option for a partition to have two different entry times. Um, imagine the scenario where you have a uh, garage entry and you need much more time to go to go to the keyboard or an entry door entry that you're right beside the keyboard. So you can assign different entry exit times to those uh, areas in one partition. Um, the devices, the devices, uh, periphery devices that you assign to the system is done without any programming. It's automatic. You just plug the devices into the bus connection, which is out, made out of four cables, plus, minus, and minus, and communication. And there is an option for automatic uh, enrollment of all those devices that you connect to the system. Again, keep a note on that. I'm talking about periphery devices, not the detectors themselves. The detectors are not addressable. They're conventional detectors. The systems are not addressable. Those are conventional systems. Um, the bus, of course, has a, the bus is over here. I can actually show you a bigger picture of that. For some reason, I can't get out of the full screen of this presentation. I don't know why. Um, the bus is colored with different colors, black black colors at terminal. Um, so if you connect the devices wrongly to the bus, misplace the misposition, the positive and negative or, or, or the communication cable, there is a light indicator that warns you about it. With the red blinks, if everything is connected properly, you get the green blinks, just like a, like a, a street light. So if something is flashing in red, means something's wrong, or you have to stop and change things. But Bus terminal has a protection. You cannot, by reversing positive and negative, you cannot burn it. Um, there is an option. I don't know how many of you are actual installers or been across installations. And um, it's a tool that we have in the, in the system that measures the resistance of the zone and is displayed on the keyboard. So you can actually check because a lot of times you plug the, you connect the wire, but mistakenly or by accident, you, you connect it under the terminal and you tie up the terminal with the screw. The wire looks like it's in the terminal, but actually isn't. So your zone stays open or in tamper, and you can't figure out why unless you measure the resistance of the zone. To measure the resistance, of course, you can get a multimeter and apply it to the cable, or you can use this tool in the control panel that gives you a real-time zone resistance. Um, and this, this for installers is um, it's a big benefit uh, because usually control panels are up um, near the ceiling and having many tools with you up on the ladder makes uh, installation kind of uncomfortable. Mm, building a PSTN communicator in all of the systems, whether you use it or not, is there. PSTN is the mainline, telephone mainline. The um, systems can be 
uh, assigned or can be monitored through uh, um, through the web with um, adding the according um, communicator communication model like LAN or GPRS model, and also the Eclipse 1632 and 99 discludes Eclipse 8. They can be um, built as hybrid system. What hybrid system means, you can have mixed wires and wireless zones. Of course, for the wireless zones, you're going to add a wireless expander model, which you'll see later in the presentation. Some things that, uh, that I'm mentioning now, we might see later, so I'll, I'll just keep them once we get there. But it's better this way, rather than, you know, better see something again, rather than forgetting it. Um, PGM zone wireless expander, fire zone support. What fire zone, uh, fire zone support? It's standard for all the control panels. But here, what we mean by fire zone support is that Eclipse 32 and Eclipse 99, we have a PGM that you can assign it to become a conventional fire zone. Actually becomes output fire zone or input zone for fire. Uh, what this makes uh, as a difference uh, versus uh, the, the regular connection with the relay base to a zone in the panel is that you don't need the four wires connection any longer because the bases you're going to use are not with relays. They're just the regular fire base, uh, conventional fire bases. So you have, um, so you save two cables and you can connect up to 32 detectors in this fire zone. It's not often, not often to install 32 detectors on intruder system, but however, if it happens, you have that option in our panel. Grade two, three certificates. Those are the keyboards. Before I move to all the keyboards, uh, there is something that's worth mentioning. All keyboards, this ones, this one, this ones, they're all compatible with all Eclipse systems. So you don't have to, uh, when, when purchase or when you're ordering or when you do stock, you don't have to as have a stock for Eclipse 8 keyboards, for Eclipse 99 keyboards, 32 keyboards. They're all compatible with all systems. We have the, the LCD keyboard that you see on your screen. It has a two-line display. It has the options to be purchased with built-in proxy card reader or without built-in proxy card reader. The proxy card reader is uh, built in over here in, in, uh, in the top, in the bottom right corner of the keyboard. And this uh, keyboard, of course, supports 16 areas and up to and 32 zones. Um, selectable main screen. You can choose what the main screen to sh shows. This is uh, probably more of a marketing thing, uh, customizing the screen. Of course, it has the backlight, so you can see it in, uh, at, at night. And there is a quick view buttons over here. Those are, those are one, of, imagine you, you keep the keyboard closed. Those are one of the most important events that you need to know that occurred without opening the keyboard, without looking at the menu. The first one, it's a, it's a window, it's a see-through window right over here. You can see it on the lead. The first button indicates if you have bypassed a zone. The second button indicates some troubles in the system the, for uh, communication, for AC loss, for battery, whatever trouble occurs, you can see that. And the third button uh, shows you uh, alarms, whether the system has been in alarm previously to your presence there. Um, that's why it's a quick view, uh, bypass memory and trouble button without opening the lid. Uh, the keyboards, those, this keyboard has zones zone and one zone in it and have additional output built in. In case you want to control some magnetic door or locks, you don't have to go back to the panel and you have an output assigned to that. You can use it because most of the installations are executed the same way. Keyboard right by the door and from the keyboard you get a magnetic contact that monitors the door right on top of the door. So the cable is very short and you don't go back to the control panel. That's what the zone is for. But imagine you need an output to control the magnetic on that door. In this case, having this keyboard, you have an output 
in the keyboard that you can assign for different things. This output is a 100 million peers. Then the next keyboard is, is the sensitive keyboard. Um, and this has no buttons, it's a touch sensitive keyboard. Uh, the same options as the previous one, just the look is different. And um, the image, of course, is different. Here you have a little bit more options. Um, I forgot to mention on previous keyboard, you can adjust the scroll speed, you can adjust the backlight uh, intensity, you can adjust the uh, internal buzzer sound level. Um, on this one, uh, there's another, another, in my opinion, very um, useful option. Every time you press a number, whether one, two, three, any of the numbers, or a button, the, the number would lead up. So imagine your code is one, two, three, four. So when you press one, two, three, four, they respectively light up for a, a second. So now what happens if somebody is looking over your shoulders and they can see the code that you entered? So if you want to avoid this, there is an option in this keyboard that uh, if you activate upon pressing any number, all the numbers and all the keyboard lead up. So you cannot really recognize which number was pressed. Multi-language, of course, support. This is the option of the Eclipse panels. You can set it up. You can set up the Eclipse panel to be in, uh, uh, I don't know how many languages we have currently, but at least five, six languages. Um, all the text will be presented in a selected language. And it's not a different keyboard that you, that you choose. It's the same keyboard, and you set it up from the panel. Building this this keyboard comes with the built-in proxy card reader. There's no option without it. Next are the LED keyboards. The LED keyboards, a lot of people think a little bit less of those keyboards. Yes, they are um, they are not preferable keyboards when you're programming the system because working on, with LED keyboard, you're bypassing the options to have a text menu. Of course, you cannot see anything but LEDs and different combinations of LED might be a little bit hard to do um and remember but besides the programming except the programming uh, cut out on those keyboards they're pretty uh, informative and pretty um uh, quick for um for quick pick at the, at the at the system status now imagine imagine this if you have an lcd keyboard and you have open zone the lcd information will scroll through the uh, area one not ready zone one open or zone five in alarm here you see it right away a1 from the picture example means a area one it's ready for arming because it's green uh, if you have an alarm in area three zone number 20 on the scroll screen of the lcd you have to read this message but here you see it right away a3 red, zone 20 red. So what I'm saying is that, in my opinion, LED keyboards are not uh, uh, worse than LCD keyboards. They're, uh, they're just, it's just up to the customer. What, what does he prefer? They're as informative as the LCD. Sometimes it's even quicker than for receiving the information of the event. But of course, you're missing the text of the LCD. Now, when I said that these keyboards are um, compatible with all Eclipse uh, uh, series, you may ask, why would I use Eclipse 8, uh, the keyboard uh, LED with the eight LEDs on it, for Eclipse 32, let's say, for example? Well, you can divide the system into eight partitions, eight different stores, and each store might have two, three areas, uh, two, three zones only. So, Assigning a keyboard like this to that store is more than enough and sufficient because this store has three zones or four zones or six zones. And this keyboard is assigned only to this uh, shop or store. So you can have eight areas, eight partitions with eight of those keyboards assigned to every one of those stores. Respectively for 16. Mm. Now the big keyboards, the big keyboards, this, the LCD, the sensitive, and this one, they have, they can be uh, ordered with built-in proxy card reader, and they have 
output in the main in the board when those small keyboards over here they don't have an output they have an input zone they're then but they don't have output and you cannot order them with um uh, with proxy card reader now this is the this is the external proxy card reader should you uh, require a reader separate from the keyboard this is the the this is the uh, proxy card reader that we offer to the market. Uh, of course, functionality is on this arm, clear memory. Proxy card is uh, the basic ones uh, that we need. Tack, some people call it tap, some people call it cards. Um, it has a zone input inside, and um, and with the sound and 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 um, light indicates different um, modes, whether the system is armed, whether the system is disarmed, whether it's a uh, invalid card presented to the proxy card, valid card presented to the proxy card, and those um, self-explanatory, of course, icons, lock, path, closed, and open, they, they respectively do the arming and disarming, and the buttons over here, A and B, if you see my mouse, uh, those are pre-programmable buttons. You can assign them to do sleep arm, stay arm, it's up to you. Now here we have the PGM expanders and the, the zone expanders. As I mentioned, now details I'm I'm skipping now, but a lot of details make a system comfortable to work with and, and preferable uh, among other systems. Like if you see here now, there's color codes on on um, expand zone expander model. I'll go back in the presentation. Let's see if I can you know, I can get out of this uh, view. If you go back, if we go back to the systems, you see in Eclipse 32 and Eclipse 99 the same uh, color coding on the connection terminals, just like here. What we decide to do first is to tilt the terminals in 45 degrees. So once you're in the installation position, you can see the, the, the terminals, what they're for, and their numbers without going under, under the alarm system and trying to tilt and break your neck, tilt your head and break your neck to see where you're connecting the, the cables. And also we did color coding on purpose. The green means zones, the blue, means outputs or PGMs. The black means bus connection. That's where the devices are connected to. Taking a bus connection, you can go star connection, you can go um, um, in serious connection, you can go uh, either way. It's no, it's no one way that you have to follow. You can go from terminal, from keyboard to keyboard to keyboard to zone expander model to panel. Or you can go mix keyboard to zone expander to panel and another keyboard directly to the panel. There is no restrictions on that uh, wiring um, wiring schematics. So now a question might arise. Okay, if, if you have color codes, green for zones, blue for outputs, why do we have on the zone expander model blue? Well, this is a little one of those extras again. Those extras that are experienced in the market and are a survey of our clients and, um, and cases uh, provoked us to, to build in the systems. So a lot of times you might gonna run cable to, let's say to a remote um, uh, facility to have a several zones there as well for protecting this facility. Then you also might wanna uh, have a local site on there to announce for intrusion. So what do you do if you don't have this uh, PGM expander, the PGM terminal? You would run the, um, you would go with the zone expander to that remote disk, the remote location, and then just for one second, you're gonna have to go with the zone, so with the PGM expander model just for one second. So we decided to put an extra and have our customer benefit from it, an extra PGM, extra output in that zone expander just in cases like that, just in cases that you're uh, securing perimeter that is far from the system and you need to use the zone, zone expander model to go far away 
and then you need to put something local there. It might be a lock of the door, might be a local silence, but you don't have to run with another module just for that. So that's why the, the blue one, uh, the blue terminals is here. It's not a mistake. Um, each, um, each of those uh, zone expander models uh, has eight zone terminals. Of course, if you use doubling, um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, zone doubling, then those eight terminals and eight zones, they become 16 zones. Um, now, it says here that the terminals are 45 degrees tilted. I already mentioned that, but what is missing here is to say that uh, we use the, the new elevator type terminal, not the one with the spring. The one with the spring, once you screw the cable in, and then you want to add more cables, you have to unscrew it, take it out, plug the screwdriver in, pop the spring out, uh, up, and try it. Those are elevator type terminal. First, they're very easy to use. Secondly, they can handle more wires than the other one. And uh, in a lot of installations, you might need to use more wires in one terminal. So much for the zone expander, PGM expander, same. As you can see, it even visually is the same, except it's the output. Uh, we have on the bottom right corner here of my screen, you can see the plastic box where you can mount uh, those um, expander models. Here's the hybrid solution, we call it. All those detectors, motion detector, magnetic door, flood detector, remote controls, combined fire detector, uh, external motion detector and siren, they're all uh, compatible with Eclipse 16, 32, and 99. And you can adapt this to the system using the wireless expander model, which is this blue uh, main board on the left-hand screen with my mouse on it. Um, it's a two-way communication. It's an 868 megahertz. What two-way communication means is that uh, you save on battery and you're more secure than one way. Uh, a lot of people I found out don't know the benefit of a two-way communication. Yes, it is a bit more expensive uh, technology, but it's worth it, in my opinion, or in Teletech's opinion. That's why we designed it two-way. And I'll give you a quick example why two-way is better than one way. The one-way detectors, let's say, communication, Detector that detects motion under um, uh, ant uh, status, and it's set up, depending on the manufacturer, to send this message to the control panel two or three times or four times or five times, depending on the manufacturer again. So if the panel gets the message, good. But if the panel doesn't get the message, the detector considers the message sent. So what if you jam the frequency in that time? Then you jam it for a minute. Uh, because there is no two-way communication, because there is no confirmation from the panel to the detector and vice versa, the detector sends a five times the message and, and stops. So if you jump the frequency, the, the, you're not going to receive the alarm. Because after these five attempts, that's it, no more messages are sent to the control panel. What happens if it's two-way communication? <clears throat> the detector will be sending messages non-stop until it gets confirmation from the control panel that the message is received. How do you benefit from that? Security is self-explanatory, probably you already guessed it. Yes, you get the alarm no matter what, you get the alarm. Then there is another, then there is another benefit on that. <clears throat> Sorry, you, uh, the main power consumption is when the detector sends message, transmits a message to the control panel. Not when it detects motion, when it transmits a message. So there is a uh, there is a comparison now between two way and one way. The the one way set up to send five messages. So those are five transmissions. What happens with the two way? The two way it detector sends motion and it wants to send this message to the control panel. If the control panel gets it from the first attempt and returns a confirmation to the to the detector, that's it. The detector can see that that message sent. So you're skipping another four transmissions, four power drain. So in respect to security already um, talked about, and now in respect to battery, yes, of course, if it's an alarm and somebody jammed the frequency, because of security, the detector is gonna try to send the alarm nonstop until it gets confirmation from the panel. But 
most of the cases is not there. Most of the cases is send the message to the panel, get confirmation, that's it, you're done. <coughs> so, um, up to 32 wireless devices per wire, per wireless expander. Why does it say per wireless expander? Because um, how many devices you can handle depends on the panel you connect the wireless expander to. If you connect it to Eclipse 16, Eclipse 16 is capable with working with 16 zones. So no matter whether it's uh, uh, wireless or wired, you cannot have more than 16 zones. So uh, respectively, you have 16 wireless devices. Each wireless device excludes the, con the, the remote controls and the sirens. Um, detectors, I mean, um, you can have 16, 16 uh, wireless devices. Eclipse 32, you can have 32 wireless devices. And Eclipse 99, you can have uh, 99, 99 zones, wireless zones. Why does it say per uh, um, per wireless expander? Because you might have more than one wireless expander connected to a system. The reason for that is that one one wireless expander might go left on a corridor, one wireless expander might go right on the corridor, and this way you accommodate buildings with the remote zones. So, because if you're gonna have just one wireless expander and, and the zones become too far away from that wireless expander, they might not hear each other. So that's how you can accommodate different spread of the of the setup. Compatible, as it says, Eclipse 16, And uh, remote controls for the 99, that depends on the users. The remote controls, they're assigned to users. How many, how users the control panel can handle that many remote controls you can have. And here we have again, two-way remote control and one-way remote control. Uh, the two-way remote control, it gives you confirmation that the command is been executed, like arm, disarm, you have visual and signal uh, and sound signalization to confirm the command or get the information about the system status. So that's the benefit of this two-way um, um, remote control, but also there is one way remote control. Their benefit is different. You don't get confirmation of the action on your remote control, but this remote control, you can assign it to many controls, many Eclipse systems that you have in your possession because it's not two-way communication. You're just telling the system, this remote control will give you commands. You don't have to confirm it. So you, if you have a um, uh, house, apartment, uh, cottage, all with a system, Eclipse systems, you can have one remote control for all of them. This is the communication models that we have. I'm gonna go quickly through them. Uh, this is the GPRS standard. This is the GPRS simple. What makes the difference between those two, those two, those two models is uh, that here on the GPRS simple, you don't have connecting terminals. You don't have input programmable input output. When here you have the input output. In other words, uh, TTA GPRS simple can be used only with Eclipse series with the serial connection, where this uh, GPRS model, it can be used as standalone as well, like uh, home automation, something like home automation. You can send SMS or activate remotely through your uh, mobile app, uh, the outputs, the inputs, whatever you have programmed. Um, here we have a TTA LAN. I'm gonna skip saying TTA because of course this TTA, the Teletech Electronics. A LAN communication models that doing the same thing over LAN connection. And we have a combo model which has a PSTN, LAN, and GPRS. Now, what is this um, What is this model used for? This is mainly used for monitoring stations where you can accommodate or adapt different brand systems to that monitoring station using this combo model. What the combo model does, you connect uh, the combo model to the PSTN of the existing panel, which is not Teletech, let's say, it might be Teletech, of course, but uh, we're talking about adopting other systems. Uh, you connect it to the PSTN terminal, and wherever you have programmed this control panel from different brands to transmit to the monitoring station uh, or a client, this model gets it from the PSTN and sends it to the monitoring station via LAN or GPS trans transfer um, uh, protocol. 
Um, you have some uh, input outputs, of course, in case you want to use them. And uh, it can be, um, it's, it's, that's why we call it universal model, because it's not directly linked to our uh, control panels. We're working on uh, 4G because those models, GPRS models here, they work on 2G. Now we're moving ahead with the times and going to 4G. Uh, GPRS model. And the GPRS model, I'm going to go back because I just saw the SD card. Here is a slot for SD card, which, with, with, which will give you the uh, possibility to work with voice. So you, you have the voice information delivered to your phone over the voice call, and you have a voice guide uh, that you can manage your system in respect of ARM, disarm, activating PGM through a voice guide menu. Uh, for activating PGM1, press 3. For activating for designing system, press 1. Uh, things like this. This is our wireless solution. It's called Bravo Panel. Um, it's pretty uh, simply designed. Of course, that it's not lack of uh, information uh, because it's simple. It's just uh, we managed to put everything under this uh, box and under this lid, and uh, you'll see later that it has more in information than you would imagine. Here's the lid open. Now, it has one area, 16 zones. You can see them over here, named, uh, numbered, they're led. You can connect one side on. Um, inside, you can fit up to three different communication models or outputs. Uh, you can have a PSTN model with voice guide, you can have a LAN model, you have PGM, you can even have GPRS model. There's three slot positions inside this small control panel that you can fit three different communication models. <clears throat> um, you can have the option to have external antenna for the GPRS. There's some settings that you do with the tip switches at the back, some settings that you do uh, with your computer, some settings, all the, uh, the settings you can do from the web. If you have a communication model that's, uh, that is set to communicate with our server uh, that I'll show you later. Now, why did I say this small panel has more information that you would believe? Now, look at that panel now. You have three buttons again, the most important buttons, alarm, troubles, and zone bypass. If, if the button zone bypass on the right hand side in my mouth, if it's lit up or if you press it, it will tell you exactly with the let indication which zone is bypassed. If you see treble, if you press the treble button, it will light up exactly whether it's the detectors or whether it's the control panels over here. If it's detector, it will tell you which detector and what the problem is with that detector. <clears throat> whether it's a battery or a, if it's a battery. Imagine you have treble. Imagine you have treble. And, um, and you press the treble with the, with the, you don't know the treble uh, nature yet. But just, just to have a lead, a lead uh, indicating that there's trouble. And I'm going to tell you in advance that the trouble is with the battery of uh, device number five. So when you press this button, here a battery is going to lead up, and here the detector number five would lead up. So you know exactly what the problem is. So that, that's what I meant when I said this small box is more informative than you would imagine. And um, the wireless devices that I mentioned previously for the hybrid solution of the Eclipse, they're exactly the same devices. So you don't buy devices, wireless devices for a Bravo and different wireless devices for Eclipse. They're the same devices with the same functions, the same properties. Depending if you want to use them with Bravo or with Eclipse. Now, this is the basic uh, diagram of communication with the Bravo panel. Bravo panel, including uh, Somebody wrote something, I don't know what it is. I guess my colleagues that are back up, they'll, they'll um, be able to respond to that. So Bravo panel, depending on the model that you have in, communicates through the web with our server, so-called the YAX service station. Um, this could be web-based or it could be actual machine that you have in your office. And then this YAX uh, uh, software, I, it, it is a software, 
but you can install it in the computer and become software with hardware. Um, then in sense, because this, this connection is encrypted, so you need this machine or you need this software to uh, and, and translate that uh, encrypted, pro encrypted protocol, then this the receiver can send uh, to monitoring station Uh, to monitoring station signals via shortcut or see a contact ID, see a protocol, sorry, not contact ID, and to a, a web interface for users or engineers that can access the system remotely and the use of the app, of course, uh, which I will mention uh, later on. The detections, the detections are executed with um, detectors. Uh, we have several uh, detectors that I'll, I'll quickly show to you now. Uh, there's the, the series of our detector is named Titan, Titan, D-L-A-G-Q-D, and the, those um, abbreviations, they have some meanings and they make difference between the detectors. Uh, the most, um, most uh, desired from customers, let's say, detector uh, is the Titan DL. The Titan DL, it's a digital uh, infrared detector. It has a pet immunity that you can set. Uh, you can have you can have the LED on or off light up detection, the movement detection. Because you might you might want to install it in your bedroom, and you don't want that detector to lead up every time you move and turn over when you're sleeping. So you can have the option to turn it off or on. It's a uh, it complies with grade two, with grade two, and it has a seven sensitivity levels selected with the jumpers inside. Seven. It can be Set up on seven sensitivity levels, which is which is a um, for, for such a detector, it's a big big advantage. Um, it has auto mode, or it has a, a auto mode means uh, sometimes you need the movement to be persistent in order to generate the alarm, or you have one movement only, which is not in auto. One movement generates the alarm. Um, this is called analog infrared, Titan AG. I don't, it's not really fair to call it analog because there's nothing analog in it. It's again di digital because all the information is digital. But yet the algorithm is a little bit less um, uh, less um, sophisticated, let's say, than the other one. What that means is that you cannot adjust the pet immunity. This detector will activate uh, upon any movement, you cannot have sensitivity levels again. So uh, in sense of security, it is again secure detector, but it has less options. And this is the most advanced of the small detectors. It's called quad element inside. It, it has something to do with the, is, you see, if I start explaining now what uh, new, new road, I can't even say the word, the way the software is designed, I'll, probably I'll get a headache, you'll get a headache too from that explanation. In neurological, uh, some, something and something, something, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's, I know what it is, it was really hard to explain. But anyway, in respect to, of processing the signal of movement, this detector would be with the most um, uh, advanced, with the most advanced, uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, uh, software. However, you can see 25, 40 kilograms pet immunity. However, it doesn't have the seven sensitivity level jumper uh, like Titan DL. So it has other benefits, it has pros and cons. So every one of those detectors can be, um, can accommodate a particular job, a particular situation, or a particular desire of, a, of, of yours or a customer of yours. Next is those um, two detectors. They're in a bigger box, a little bit bigger box, because they're, um, they're dual technology detectors. I'll start with the one on the right. This is a motion detector with glass break detector built in. So you have two detectors in one. Uh, the same option as the other one, led on off with the jumper, glass break, you know what glass break is. Now, what's Titan MVAM. This is the most secure and most advanced of our range of detectors. 
It's a microwave and anti-masking. So it has dual technology again uh, built in. One detection is microwave, one detection is infrared detection. They're combined and you have an anti-masking, which means that no, if somebody attempts to cover with spray or, or uh, transparent tape, the infrared part of the detector, the detector will fall into alarm, uh, into tamper, which is a sabotage. So you cannot have this covered uh, intentionally in order to, um, uh, for later um, robbery, executing a robbery, let's say. Um, the relation between the microwave part and the peer part, the motion sensor part can be adjusted with an on or or um, type relation. The sensitivity of microwave can be adjusted uh, again with um, uh, trimmers inside. And uh, this is, uh, I would say, this is um, pretty hard to overtake detector uh, from from anybody because of the dual technology, because of the anti-masking, because of the second technology being microwave. Uh, the sirens, of course, we have a, a range of sirens. Um, the size, first, the size of the sirens is it's a, it's designed in such a way that you can uh, put your logo of your company over here. That's why we made it flat and, and wide. Um, there is, those two sirens are, those, the three sirens are with piezo speakers inside. Loudness in decibels, don't, don't get confused by decibels. Uh, sometimes the, it's not just decibels that makes uh, uh, speaker loud. It's it's only the frequency. It's all, also the frequency because you may have a lot of decibels with low frequency, and this won't even uh, light the bell in your head. But if you have a high frequency, small decibels, it 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 will probably hurt your ears. So it's pretty um, strong sirens. It has a built-in flash. Um, he has the option for three, two or three wire connection. Um, and of course, all of the devices, uh, they have bidirectional tamper, which means whether you open the lid or you remove from the mounting area, uh, anti-sabotage uh, will be triggered. Uh, now we have this silence here on the, left, on the right hand side, is SR400. Um, this, First of all, the consumption, the consumption is the same as the other sound. But what makes this, and, and of course the option, but what makes this silence different than, than those two on the left here, is that the lid, I don't know if you've ever installed a siren up on three meters high. Um, you have to remove the lid uh, and then uh, put it somewhere, up on the ladder somewhere, and work with the siren wiring and then put the lid back. Um, a lot of times the lid might fall off, you have to go down, get it. This siren, the lid is on hinges over here on the bottom, there's two hinges, so you just open the siren lid and leave it hanging on the hinges, which make life of, um, makes life of the, the installers much easier. Software. There's uh, several softwares that I'll mention. Software for monitoring, software for uh, uh, programming, and software for uh, user. We, it's a it's a software mobile that uh, you can find it in App Store or um, or um, um, what was the other store for the uh, iPhone I, I, iTunes whatever it was. So it's available for for uh, uh, iPhone and for Android as well. Uh, free to to download on Apple Store. Yes. Uh, this is the interface. What it would actually what you will actually see. How I will tell you how it works. You connect the system with communication model that connects to the YAC server, the software, and then once connected to the software, you can have uh, this system added to your phone. You can have more than 10 systems added to your phone. Uh, the, the phone uh, layout of the program is what you see here on the left. You have basic options. Uh, arm, disarm, bypass, uh, zone status, uh, controlling outputs, lock file, turn uh, on demand, um, video or camera on demand. Um, but 
this is what this is what it's put in a mobile application. However, with this same connection that you receive the opportunity to use mobile application, you can connect from your computer to the system, have full control of the system, including all the programming. It's like I can I can have a system in Japan and control it and have it from here. Uh, uh, as, same way as it's like I'm in front of the system. You can reorder the system list, you can change uh, clocks, uh, and you get push notification of your choice. You can set up when to receive push notification in ARM, in whether this ARM, whether travel, whether a technical travel, whether alarm. You can you can design the uh, app to show you or to send you push notification upon your uh, desire. So that doesn't have to be open in order to get the push notification. That, that the app can be completely closed and should uh, one of those events arises in the system, you will get the push notification popping up. And this is the uh, web um, interface. You have, you can log in as your user, you can see your system, you can do everything that you can do with the mobile app, plus you can edit the parameters if you see my mouse. You can have complete access to the system programming. This is again the um, uh, layout for connection, including the video verification. We have, uh, you can connect up to five cameras, respectively what you can have in case of alarm, um, five seconds before the alarm and five seconds after the alarm video, up to five video, uh, recordings are saved uh, per camera. You can have a live stream on demand. You can go in the app or on the computer and you can say, turn the camera on, I wanna see what's happening right now. So you, you have both, you have video on demand and you have video in case of intrusion that gives you five seconds before the intrusion and five seconds after the intrusion recording of the site. Uh, we support currently HIC vision uh, cameras uh, and heat vision NDR. Um, now we're moving to the part that of observer. Um, this is kind of a monitoring, but not really monitoring. Monitoring is designed for many, many uh, sites. Where this one, um, this one is um, more of a visual for the end user or guard, because. I'll jump forward. This is what monitoring software usually looks like. And you have a, a supervisor that stays or a worker that stays in front of the screen and reads all that. Where this one is more, uh, you, you can see it right away. It's, it's more visual. Um, let's say close complexes, like uh, six, seven buildings or the five, 10, 20 houses in, in close um, private complex for the guard house to monitor those houses. Um, what we have here, we're still working on this one. Now it's ready for the um, uh, fire products. Now we're making it uh, compatible with intruder products. Uh, what's interesting about this is that you can change the interface, the pictures and the layout of the um, um, properties. It's free uh, uh, picture format. It's just drag and drop into the screen. You can uh, make it bigger, smaller, have the night view, the day view. Um, the dongle or the, the key, you actually, you can get the observer from a website is free. And it's not a demo version, it's an original version, except that it's limited to 30 minutes. And every 30 minutes, you have to, it freezes on you and you have to restart it. But this is the actual version, it's not a demo version. Now, once it freezes on you, and you restart it, you don't lose any of the information that you just previously put in the observer. It just freezes. So it doesn't work like a real monitoring. Um, this prevents customer, um, you know, uh, violating uh, or um, trying to bypass the purchase of the, should you like an experiment and like the software, all you need to do is just request to purchase it and we'll give you a software based key. Uh, that's a very easy procedure. It's not the actual key, just a flash drive that you plug in your computer will give you a, 
uh, you read that flash drive parameter, send them to, to us and we um, implement the code for it and send it to you over the email. You just put it on a flash drive and this flash drive becomes the key for our license for the um, software. This is, as I mentioned, monitoring software is intended for monitoring stations. The control panels that are connected to the EX sends um, signals to this software, and this software visualizes it in or translates it in understandable language as a site um, uh, for monitoring. Plus, this software uh, it can work with other monitoring uh, stations. It's not just the uh, Ajax. So it's a solution for um, uh, monitoring stations. Uh, data backup and restore, independent environment window, multiple client connection support, SMS messages, all those, uh, I call it regular uh, possibilities for monitoring uh, software. And that was about it. I hope I didn't take much of your time. Should you have any questions now, feel free to ask. Um, of course, it's really hard to contain myself in 30 minutes or 40 minutes because we can talk in details for days about any of the systems of Teletext, but that's how much time we have to uh, set up for this web meeting. And I hope the information was uh, um, helpful or uh, useful to you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Kirill. Uh, now, guys, it's your turn. If you have any questions, you can ask freely. Uh, our technical support guys are here, so they can answer all of your questions. You can switch on your, your microphone just, and then you can receive the answers. I saw that there are a few questions on the chat. I think that Jordan was, was answering about the IJEX server was one of them. In order for us to hear you, you can probably unmute your mic in case you want to ask question live. Hey, if anybody has any questions. We're working on the new version now. Um, when will be released, I will have to ask the person that's responsible for that, uh, which is not in the office. Who's not in the office right now due to the corona um, the restrictions. But um, if you drop us a line on uh, email, um, probably we'll give you some uh, estimated dates for the release. As far as I know, it might be even ready now or tomorrow, but better to ask the person responsible, not to bring you to confusion or false information. Excuse me, Carmen, you didn't mute all the participants by any chance, did you? Yeah, yeah, I, I muted them, but I don't know, maybe if somebody has any questions, yeah, they can unmute it because if it nothing, will unmute all of them. Yes, if nothing <laughs> comes to you, if nothing comes to yeah. your head right now, yeah. don't worry about it. You, you just um, uh, feel free to drop us a line on an email of whether you value or support, uh, and we'll be more than happy to answer. Okay, I'm going to shut myself down. Thank you again for participating in that. I hope it was good uh, and informative for you. And, uh, and maybe maybe we'll do something again in the future. Maybe 
they will uh, let us travel <laughs> at the end and uh, and we'll be able to see each other in person thank you again yeah i'm pretty positive that uh, really soon we'll we'll make again the same seminar and of course the topic will be different uh supposedly andre was switched on oh, or not yeah okay so it's a, if anybody has any anything to ask uh, as, as kirill mentioned now is the time to, to, to ask it on, online, live. If not, you can just send us an email to our support support mail or to our regional sales. Um, in a minute, we'll, we'll publish uh, the, the, the emails of support and also of uh, Mr. Ivalo Marinov in order for you to have direct connection with them. Uh, in any case, again, one more time, thanks uh, for your uh, presentation here. Thanks to Kirill, because I think that uh, the presentation was uh, pretty pretty intense let's say fast and informative and i think well i had i had 40 minutes i couldn't contain myself yeah. in those 40 minutes we went up an uh, hour and a half so hour yeah, and 15 I know, minutes I so know. i know but i think yeah. i think that it's better to uh, as you not once but even several times you mentioned that uh, there are not so many differences between between the the, the main products uh, and the small features made the differences uh i think that you was uh, deep into some kind of the details uh, enough in order to to show to the to the audience that uh, we have we have our our advantages let's say and one of the main thing that you mentioned at the beginning is that uh, 30 years uh, on the market it's not it's not by a by a coincidence you know uh so guys one more time thanks have a good uh, weekend starting from tomorrow i think uh, then I think that maybe till the end of the summer we will try to to meet you again, to to reach you again, to, to make another another uh, presentation. If not, I don't know. Be healthy and stay tuned with all the news from our websites and from our guys. Uh, we will shut down the the session in ten minutes, just to give you a chance to 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 see at least the uh, the emails of, of uh, support and of Mr. Ivan Marinov in the chat section and eventually to 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 ask your question. Wabi, thanks thanks to to have you here. Hope that it was helpful for you, even if I know that you're more advanced user than us. <laughs> okay. Now we will publish the. Yes, of course. At least uh, we will, we will, we have made our uh, we have made a video of that uh, of that session. Uh, lately on later on we will uh, we will send it to to our customers and eventually we will publish it in uh, our YouTube channel. And of course, along together with that, we will send you the presentation to all the the, the participants today and to all the guys that we have invited. Hello, Vizar. Nice to meet you. Hey, how are you? Hi, good, good, good. I'm here with some some of my colleagues, but you can only see me. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit late, uh, but we had some some other stuff going on, so just managed to log in. Thanks to having you, <laughs> and thanks for having us. It, it's a pleasure again to to meet you. Likewise. Okay. If you have anything else to ask or to to clarify, uh, not not right now. I I'm just curious to 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 learn what's new from from Teletech on the intrusion systems, and to learn a little bit more of uh, what we what can we implement uh, starting from today differently or better or whatever. I have, I have a few of my colleagues here that are behind the camera. Uh, okay. I have you on a projector on the wall so they can hear, everybody can hear you and see you all together. Okay, good. Hello guys, nice to, nice to meet you. It will be more likely a private session because uh, we was just done with the presentation already. 
yeah, if I will set that eventually we will send you the, the presentation and the, the video. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it will be especially for you, let's say. And if you if you need, of course, some clarification, we can make a live uh, chat with you and with your colleagues in order to explain to you uh, some how to say some 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 uh, details if it's needed because I know that your guys most of them are very uh, advanced so it's I think that they will be uh, very uh, how to say very uh, familiar with with our stuff. Yes. Yes, but still, still, you're more more further than we are. You you have more details, and whatever new that you could share, uh, it's more than welcome. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have a presentation that we're working on. Uh, we can probably send them to them, and we're working on. Um, different interface of the um, uh, mobile today app completely different uh, setup completely different interface uh, we're working also we're gonna issue a keyboard for the bravo that i didn't mention because i had to change the presentation make it fit in the time that i have plus i didn't know the level of um, knowledge of all the participants nor uh, how um, good they um, um, uh, absorb uh, net meetings and English language. So, you know, when it's a, a web meeting like this, it's a little bit different and harder than when it's live meeting. Yeah, that's right. It's much more difficult this way. Yeah. Now I see, I see your smile, I get motivated. Then I, I see the presentation, I don't get motivated. Yeah, just go ahead, don't worry. Uh, yeah, if, I already if, done that. If you were myself late. or my colleagues will have, will have some questions, then we will sure. address them properly. Yeah, you don't have to, we don't have to stay in that chat room now in order to answer or have the questions answered or asked. Uh, whatever you, something arises in your head, just drop a line on uh, if I was email or support email, and we'll take care of that. Okay, perfect. As always. Perfect. All right. Thank okay, you. I see no other um, activities here, so I'm gonna cut off myself <laughs> from the chat room and um, wish you all, all the best. Stay safe. Bye-bye for now. So come on, is somebody else joining us? Sorry, didn't hear you well. Is someone else uh, joining the webinar or? Uh, actually, the that? webinar was just finished. <laughs> we was yeah. we was finishing just. So okay. I think that that was that was all. Yeah. Okay, we'll be waiting. Yeah, we have started. Hello again, guys. Uh, I also would like to thank everybody for participating. Uh, we will send to, to to the ones of you who would like uh, the video and uh, the presentation. And of course, as my colleague said, uh, if you have any questions, you can write to me or to the support of Teletech Electronics. Thank you.